Welcome to this overview walkthrough of Minimal Audio's Rift 2.0, the revolutionary hybrid distortion plugin that takes your sound design to the next level. You can check it out here on Audio Plugin Deals. I'm Marcus. Let's dive in, take a look at these awesome features. Let's start with a look at the intuitive modulation settings here on Rift. So here I have it pulled up on a bass. So let's take a listen and see what we can do with these uh, modulation options down here. So starting with just uh, the bass on its own, I can very quickly start to add another sense of rhythm, another little layer here um, when I've I just uh, turned on this Rift plugin. And you can see here that I have uh, different options here for the follow curve, the LFO, and two different curves that I can choose from a bunch of presets on or draw in the points manually. So um, what we're seeing happen here is as we're listening to this bass line, you can see that it's that kind of pumping is following that curve one here. And that curve one is modifying the drive over here in the upper left. So I can take these curves and just drag them to any of these controls on the interface and modulate it through whatever that curve is doing. So um, really easy to use, really quick to figure out how to do it if I wanted to change how things are going here. So for example, if I wanted to add maybe another little spike over here, let's go ahead and add another one, I just double click, do this. So really easy to figure out as I'm as I'm going through and doing that. And then I'll just double click to get rid of it, go back to go back to what we were. Again, just a really quick way to add another sense of rhythm there with some of the presets or just drawing in your own. I can change that from, right now I've just got to set it one bar, but you can go through and uh, when you're on the sync setting, sync it up with whatever tempo you want there. So as another example of how to add that, let's just say we want to add a uh, this modulation of curve two over on our filter. Grab this, drop it over here on the cutoff wheel, and... And I can see how it's modulating now. And then if I wanted to remove it, I just go ahead and remove that curve. So really easy to use all of those curves down here. Really cool to start to tie them into multiple effects and get some really cool and sometimes unexpected uh, little sound design pieces. Another quick example of where we can use that. Here I've got a stab that's just uh, added in. So let's see just right there. But if I wanted to shape that sound a little differently, have it kind of swoop up more of a riser, I've just added this curve here, set it to ramp up, go ahead and turn this on and let's let's hear how this affects it. Get this, change the setting so that it uh, triggers with the MIDI. And I can just adjust the curve I want it to be even more of a swoop. Drag that down. There we go. So a really cool way to turn it from just a simple little to something more like this. And really quick way to get some sound design options uh, all from one interface here. Next thing we'll take a look at here is this multi-band effect section. So if I turn this on, I get the option to control things at a band level. So let's take a listen to what we're looking at here. So here I can solo each of these bands. See what that mid sounds like. Move these left and right, get a different cutoff. So in the mix here. So maybe I don't want that punching through quite as much. A 
Really cool way to start doing that. This refilter option here also just helps produce a little bit of a warmer sound. As you can see, I'm hovering over there. So let's hear what that does. Here's that off. Here's that on. You can also control how that multiband effects panel here affects each of the main elements. So if I have it for distortion, I turn them all off. Versus just which elements that multiband filter or multiband processing is going through. Next up is the intelligent randomization feature here. So at the bottom with the click of a button, I can randomize a bunch of the knobs and settings here to get a totally different sound here. Uh, as I hover over it, I can have a couple different options. So I can do just overall randomizing, which does distortion feedback and the filter, or I can right click and choose which one specifically I want to do. I can also, when I'm doing this, I can lock these different knobs, pretty much all of them, and anything that I know that I don't want to change during this randomization, if I am just want to play around with other things and I've landed on the perfect kind of tone or whatever for my uh, distortion settings, then I can go ahead and lock those and then use randomize. Before you do that, also just suggest going ahead and saving your preset if it's one that you like. So let's see, cool box chop preset. Let's go ahead and save that. Great, I've got that available now and I can mess around with the randomization. So we can go from something like this. Let's go ahead and randomize it. Go ahead and randomize it again. <laughs> go ahead and try that again. Randomized feedback there since that's kind of the gnarliest sound in piece. Go ahead and just do full randomize. <laughs> Let's just hear that all together. We got a siren now. And I can always just go back to my preset here since I saved it. So again, control of that randomization, either just letting it fly or uh, locking things down one by one as you figure out which pieces you like. Gives you a lot more options to quickly play around with things and, uh, and find a sound maybe that you didn't expect. In addition to the advanced view that I've been showing, you have the toggle at the bottom, allowing you to switch between the simple kind of play view here and that more advanced view with all the controls. So once you've got things adjusted just the way you want them, you can go ahead and just watch this cool oscilloscope as you're listening back. So just a simple one with some of the main controls up here. Uh, so really helpful as you start to play around with the presets, you can maybe play around with a couple of the main knobs here before getting into the nitty gritty here and diving into that advanced view. The preset library here comes with over 400 presets, so giving you a ton of options to get started, getting you inspired quickly. Here's one of uh, just on my drum bus here that I have Rift on. And let's just click through a few of these, give you an example of how it can change your uh, sound and just what kind of presets we're working with. I'm going to focus on the ones in the drum sections here uh, as, we're, as we're on that drum bus. So let's go ahead, take a listen first, uh, just without it here. And then... go through a couple of these.
see how quickly we were able to transform the sound of our drums just by flipping through the presets there with quite a few cool options just at the preset level. And if I wanted to get a little more specific and I know what I'm looking for or just want to play around with it more, continuing to dive into the knobs from there. Next up, let's take a look at these morphing filters over here in the bottom right. So here on this, let's just uh, turn this off here for a second. So this part here, just a simple little single note pad and using a combination of the curves that we went over earlier and this morph setting here, get a totally different sound. So as we're going through, uh, I have this LFO and I have it dragged over onto this morph option. So I'll play around with this knob so you can hear a little more of what it's doing as well as the uh, tempo here so you can start to zone in on what exactly is changing with that morphing filter. So just another tool you have to give another layer of depth to your sound design, something to help that sound evolve as it's going. Next up, let's take a look at the melodic feedback settings here in the bottom left. So on this particular sound, let's say I want to tune that feedback to match my track or even build out a little bit of melodic sequencing there to control the tuning of that feedback. So turning this on here, Let's go ahead and bring that feedback mix up so you can hear what's happening. So right now it's tuned to C3. So you can start to hear that having the effect both as I'm moving the frequency there and the feedback percentage knob. So as I'm controlling this, um, let's say that I'm wanting to add like a little bit of um, kind of a shimmer on that sound. So let's hear that. Again, this is without feedback. So if I want to add a little bit of shimmer, maybe I go ahead and make this a little higher. Yeah, something like that. cut this so that it's high passing a little higher, not doing anything on the low end. And maybe I want that shimmer to be spread more. And again, without it now. So again, cool control that you have here on the feedback. Again, I can also use the curves here to control it. So as I'm looking at this, let's say that I want to uh, just have simple LFO control that tuning. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over to my frequency knob. And to start to make that have an effect, go ahead and just control it here. And to give it more range, I'm gonna go bring this back to the middle C. And if I don't want to use that simple LFO, maybe I can go ahead and change this to either randomize it. So let's go ahead and just use the randomize here. And that's going to change that LFO on each iteration. Or if I wanted to uh, instead Let's go ahead and remove this, bring one of those more complicated curves over, uh, or use one of the presets here. So I can go ahead, go to um, sequences and use one of these melodic sequences. You can see there are a ton of presets there for the different patterns to get you started. Um, but let's go ahead and do, yeah, let's do this one since it's got so many options here. Now I'll go ahead and drag that over to frequency. Now 
I could go in and change each of these, make sure it's in the right key, uh, doing everything there to sound right in the track. But just as a quick example, you can see how it gives you a different little sound uh, just by just like with the other knobs, just dragging that modulation, dragging that curve over onto our feedback tuning. Couple cool options here on the interface controls as well. You can toggle between light and dark mode, uh, get your preferences set there. And you can also, uh, very helpful for learning this tool here, you can go ahead and turn on tool tips where if you hover over things, you probably saw it throughout the video as I turned it on and off, um, but you can hover over things and it'll tell you more about what it's doing. So really nice way to learn the tool instead of uh, going and pouring through the manual. In addition to that tool tip, the first time you open that, um, maybe you can open it again some other way, I'm not exactly sure, but the first time you open it, it gives you a nice little guided tour of the plugin pointing out the different main areas. So it was a really nice first time experience just opening it up and figuring out what's what and where everything is and, and what the most important features are. So first time you open it up, be on the lookout for that and uh, don't skip through it too quick because it is pretty helpful to see uh, where, where everything is on it. That's it here for our quick overview of Minimal Audio's Rift 2.0. You can check out this versatile plugin for sound design on audio plugin deals. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.